taking in all six cross country events in Beijing. If we do have a chance to stand on the podium and see the flag get raised. I think it's a very cool testament for me that you can do this the right way. And you can do it by honoring what your body needs and listening to that and having a body that's unique to you. An athlete not afraid to put it all out there on and off the snow. Kristen Dahlgren, NBC News, Stratton, Vermont. And we thank her for sharing her story. Tonight's primetime coverage of the Olympics begins at 8 Eastern time here on NBC. That's nightly news for this Monday. I'm Lester Holt. Thanks for watching. Please take care of yourself and each other. Good night. KUAM TV 8, your home for Super Bowl 56. KUAM News Headlines is presented by Calvo's Insurance, a legacy of trust, serving Micronesia since 1938. Matson, celebrating 25 years of commitment to Guam, Micronesia, and the CNMI. Cars Plus Hyundai, home of the Kona Electric Vehicle, an electric heart with an SUV soul. Test drive yours today at Cars Plus. McDonald's of Guam, I'm loving it, and King's Restaurant, serving your local breakfast, lunch, and dinner favorites for over 45 years. The latest turbulence involving the OPA's dismissal of an appeal filed by JMI Edison involving an airport contract. Sabrina Salas Mantinani has the story. Testing and possibly new protocols, the latest with Daniel Perez as more kits have finally arrived. And Nestor Lacanto breaks down the proposed FY23 budget with BBMR. These stories and more right here, right now on Guam's News Leader. Huffaday and good evening everyone, I'm Hannah Devonzo and thanks for tuning in to your news leader. In an interview with KUAM, JMI Edison continues to defend they did nothing wrong and the OPA decision to dismiss their appeal related to an airport contract was based solely on the use of the word bro and not on the merits and the baggage of the winning contractor. Instead of getting TMI, JMI says the OPA's decision only focused on the issue of BRO. In hindsight, the uh, pronoun um, might have been uh, poorly chosen, but there's nothing illegal with the word bro. There is something illegal when a contractor working for the government of Guam, GIAA, continues to operate as a contractor without a contractor's license. JMI specifically appealed GIAA's contract award to Menzies for a baggage handling system because the company didn't have a contractor's license. But it was an email from JMI to CLB Executive Director Cecil Orsini that the OPA took issue with, ultimately deciding this was a case of a bro just helping out another bro. JMI's John Elow, however, says the OPA focused on the pronoun instead of the actual letter submitted by Orsini, which he maintains does not need action by the CLB board because it's a citation. So on the two findings, the first finding was really, you know, CLB stating that Nancy did not have a license. The second finding was that the work at GIAA required a contractor's license. And that's all the letter, that's the content of what the CLB uh, letter had was just those two findings. There wasn't any manipulation of any other thing. It's just those are pretty straightforward. According to JMI, the facts were lost in all the turbulence. It just became intertwined uh, because of the uh, auditors, uh, the, the OPA's ruling. But really, if you go back since day one in September, when we FOIA GIA, we communicate with uh, uh, the CLB, the staffer gave us the uh, information that they were licensed. So, you know, you just got to go back from the beginning rather than start at December. And that's when, you know, I, I wish, you know, the, the auditor would, should have conducted a full hearing. So that way he can call us all stakeholders in, people from Menzies, me, uh, GIA, and get the whole story. For now, the issue is grounded with the OPA, but JMI is charting a new flight path at the Superior Court the entire ordeal costing a pretty hefty ticket.
It's disappointing in, in two ways. Not only are we fighting, spending money with our lawyers uh, on, on the OPA, but now we got to spend more money when we go to the court system. Whereas if it stayed in the OPA and if we had a full hearing, then all the stakeholders would have been sworn in and, and uh, the OPA would have learned more about the history from September, not just basing his decision on December on and solely on the word bro which is, again, is not illegal. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Sabrina Salas, Matanani. Alao also points out that this is a contract renewal for Menzies and that it hasn't had a contractor license for the past several years. Also involving the OPA, an appeal was filed by Guam Pacific Enterprises against the Guam Department of Education regarding HEPA filters. The company filed the appeal after GDOE denied their protest in mid-January. Among the list of reasons for the filing of the appeal, the company asserts the authors of the procurement documents at GDOE aren't architects and have no engineering background, but rather are educators. The reason why there are so many concerns from prospective bidders, DOE has no definite answers on many concerns. Just today, Guam Pacific Enterprises filed another appeal against GDOE, this time related to the procurement of cafeteria tables. Looking into procurement at the Guam Department of Education is Senator Sabina Perez. The Democrat lawmaker sent over a Freedom of Information Act request to GDOE, wanting information about maintenance services, air conditioners, and computers. Specifically, she wants all communication as well as meeting notes. GDOE has acknowledged receipt and is working on their response. The government of Guam continues to ride high on tax revenue collection, says Budget Director Lester Carlson, and he's very confident about next fiscal year 2023's proposed spending plan of nearly a billion dollars, which is 50 million more than this year. Nestor Lacanto reports. Budget Director Lester Carlson says just take a look at the very strong general fund collections. Fiscal year 2021 ended $60 million higher than expected, and that strong performance continues, he says, in fiscal 2022, with more than $35 million over projections in the first quarter ending in December. If that's not proof enough, he says, they checked revenue collections for January, and it's $11 million over projections, so now they're $47 million ahead so far in FY 2022. There were some concerns about the cessation of PUA and what that would do. Um, and um, I understand there might be still some um, some thoughts that uh, without PUA, uh, we're doomed, but we're not seeing that. Um, the, the penchant for um, people to say that uh, residents are going to spend less isn't showing up in tax collections, and it's not showing up in a grocery store, and it's not showing up at Island Girl Coffee. Senators we've spoken to, though, remain skeptical. They aren't convinced that the economy can ride high when tourism, the main pillar of our two-pillar economy, can plunge with little sign of an immediate resurgence. We're in the middle of Cope North. There's 2,500 troops. We've been, uh, you know, we have a, a, a plethora of military construction con uh, contracts going on. We've got uh, the uh, big development, um, you know, in uh, Timuning, the Don Quixote. Yeah, I see construction all over. And one of the things that people really need to understand is that construction drives the local economy. Government line agencies must submit their individual budgets by mid-March. Then the budget hearing process will begin. Carlson and the administration are standing pat on their numbers. I'm very, very comfortable with what it is that we've been trying to say. And I think if you look at what the governor uh, has blessed, and what uh, Edward Byrne and, and I have tried to uh, get the legislature to, you know, adopt, um, you know, I think our numbers have been and will continue to be uh, born with more support behind them. The legislature is required to submit a budget plan to the governor by the end of August. For Guam's News Network, I'm Nestor Lacanto. Meanwhile, according to the Budget Bureau, the governor still has more than $400 million in unspent American Rescue Plan money. That was by design, Nestor. Um, these funds are available to December of 2024. This is not supposed to be 
something that is just used um, without regard for future growth needs. And uh, a lot of the funding that you see that hasn't been um, touched yet uh, has a future design to it. Um, Department of Public Works, for example, uh, there is a lot of money in uh, uh, road paving, things that we haven't been able to do much of uh, in the last few years because of budgetary constraints. We asked Carlson if the administration might also use some of the remaining ARP funds for additional direct relief programs for cash-strapped residents. People tend to forget uh, how much of uh, the, the CARES Act and the ARP money has gone directly either to residents uh, or uh, to businesses. So, you know, we're at a situation where um, I really believe that people need to stop and think about what it is that she's provided to the legislature and the, the, the breadth of the programs that are being, um, you know, uh, supported. Carlson said that the money is also not designated to be used for agency budget shortfalls. And turning to the latest with COVID, we check in with our Daniel Perez, who joins us live from Juan M. Guerrero Elementary here in Harmon. Daniel? Yes, Hannah, vaccinations just wrapped up here at Juan M. Guerrero Elementary, the first in a series of after-school vaccination clinics hosted by GDOE and Public Health. But the big news today, a long-awaited shipment of test kits have finally arrived. Here's more. According to Public Health COVID-19 Incident Commander Fernando Estevez, Guam currently has 15,631 test kits with another 8,500 PCR test kits that arrived today. With more test kits on the way, Public Health looks to reevaluate their testing strategy. The future really is going to be more towards home testing. So we're looking at some initiatives to fill in the gaps um, for the test kits that are provided to the community. Because as we've done when we were very judicious with our testing strategy, when we were limited in supplies, is we were focusing on the high risk individuals. Now for all of those, everyone else who want to get tested for other reasons, um, if we have the supplies, absolutely, we want to open it back up to them. We also want to find other methods and ways to provide them testing without having to come to um, our community testing sites. Even if they turn to home testing for most, Estevez says public health still needs to catch those cases that are high risk. Public health is still looking at how effective this will be, as it all depends on the supply and ability to provide rapid tests and the ability to provide other tests, such as the PCR. When we have enough um, rapid tests that we can push out to the clinics and when we have enough PCRs that we can have um, presently. So assuming that all of the testing supplies come in, then based on the projections that we have, we'll, 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 we'll be looking to open that back up as well. Maybe when the second order comes in, then we'll, we'll revisit and we'll make the determination at that point. But I won't do it unless the supply is there. Public Health anticipates an additional 25,000 rapid tests to arrive this week. Another after-school vaccination clinic will be held tomorrow at Carbolito Elementary from 3 to 6 p.m. Reporting live for Guam's News Network, I'm Daniel Perez. Back. Thanks, Daniel. And just before news time, the Joint Information Center reported Guam recorded its 299th COVID-19-related fatality, an 83-year-old man who was partially vaccinated that tested positive yesterday. Additionally, the JIC reported 844 new positive cases. Meanwhile, the CNMI is essentially reopening its borders after lifting its on-arrival COVID-19 testing requirements. Tomas Mangletnia has the details. The CNMI has opened its borders for the fully vaccinated, no longer requiring COVID-19 testing upon arrival. CHCC spokesperson Gil Lefoyfoy. The data that we're seeing here in the CNMI is that we're identifying cases in the community more than we identify cases from travel. However, all passengers still need to upload proof of vaccination and complete a health declaration form before boarding, which also asks for secondary verification of vaccination if you received your shots outside of the CNMI. If you are unvaccinated, you are required to quarantine at home for at least five days and test on day five. If fully vaccinated travelers want to get tested on day five, they can go to a community-based testing site. Travelers to Rhoda and Tinian can schedule their test at the health centers on island. Surveillance of COVID-19 at the border isn't the best predictor of the burden here to our healthcare system. So we're shifting the focus on 
medically significant community infections. The shift comes after the CNMI reached a 99% vaccination rate, with half of those who are fully vaccinated also boosted. Tomas Maglonia for KOM News. And once again, we invite you to voice your view across our social media pages. This week, we're talking about the Super Bowl. Today, we're asking what your favorite tunes are from this year's halftime show performers. Let us know and we'll share some of your responses on the link. And still to come on Your News Leader, a progress report with our Isaiah Uggen on how the Academy of Our Lady of Guam is coping with COVID and the latest with proposed multi-story development in Timoning. These stories and more when we return. Fortunately, Guam has a real problem with unwanted invasive species. Help us in preventing their introduction and spread. The coconut rhinoceros beetle, the little fire ant, the African snail, Siam weed. These are just a few of the numerous invasives on Guam. Follow proper custom procedures when bringing plants and animals into Guam. Help protect Guam. Tell your family and friends about invasive species. To report invasive species, call 475-PEST. Don't need to work, babe. Keep the smile on your face. The moments you can't replace. And I'll be around. Wherever life takes you, we're always here for you. Calvo's Insurance. Count on us for life. It's beautiful. It is, right, baby? Dad, isn't that where we usually stop for gas? It's where we used to stop, but not anymore. But isn't that the place with the milkshakes? Okay, all right, all right, let's go. Get it out, kids. <laughs> Take your adventure further in the first ever Santa Fe Hybrid. I'm a small business owner and I run a couple of boats. And when COVID first hit, we were kind of, uh, at first we thought it was just like any other pandemic, like the SARS, and we weren't prepared for it until uh, unemployment is shutting down the whole uh, industry. My whole uh, business relies solely on uh, tourism. When that shut down, we're kind of worried because we don't have enough savings for the uncertainty of uh, how long it's gonna last. We're so thankful that the government, uh, the federal government started giving out the uh, grants, loans, and like PPP and all that. That really saved us and it's really helping us a lot survive, you know, and right now we're, we're still struggling, but at least it's easier and without those uh, grants and, uh, and loans that from the uh, federal government, I mean, I, I, we wouldn't be here. Thank you for the unemployment assistance from the federal funds. Thank you. <laughs> this ad was paid for with official funds from the office of Congressman Michael F.Q. San Nicolas. Let us know what's up on our KOM News WhatsApp tip line at 671-727-0094. Share information about what's happening in your town on Guam or the CNMI and what you want us to know. Reach us on WhatsApp at 671-727-0094. Welcome back. Getting into crime in court news now. He was scheduled for a pretrial conference today before Superior Court Judge Maria Sanzon, but instead the hearing was continued for Paul Santos Mofnis Jr., the AG's office confirms that negotiations on a plea agreement have been underway and that the family has been notified and informed. Mofnis was indicted in April of 2019 after allegedly kidnapping and raping a 10-year-old girl who was walking to her bus stop in Timoning. He is a repeated sex offender. In May of 1999, he was sentenced 27 years in prison for kidnapping and raping four teenagers. He was granted early parole in 2018. And in court today was Manuel Tatautau for a further proceedings hearing. Forensic evaluations were discussed but have not yet been reviewed by attorneys. They also discussed Tatautau receiving services from the Guam Behavioral Health and Wellness Center while at DOC. And in August of 2021, Tatautau allegedly stabbed, beat, and set John Pinala on fire, who later died in October. Tatautau was charged with attempted aggravated murder, attempted murder, kidnapping, aggravated assault, and felonious restraint. He allegedly threatened to kill a woman because he felt she was robbing him of his entitlements from his father's death. 
On February 6, police received a complaint from a woman alleging Roy Ronald Osik had been terrorizing her through phone calls and text messages. Osik was later picked up in Dededo. During questioning, he allegedly confessed to threatening the victim. According to court documents, he even showed police a message he sent, You're right, I smoke ice, drink, tobacco, I keep forgetting that I'm going to kill you. He faces a slew of charges to include terrorizing and harassment. He didn't get very far after allegedly robbing a Jigo Mobile 22-year-old. RJ, a.k.a. J. Wine, is accused of entering the gas station just before 4 a.m. on Monday, demanding beer and threatening the cashier with a machete. Apparently, apparently, he remained on premise. The victim found Wine sleeping on the ground under a tree behind the gas station. The crime was caught on surveillance video. Wine was charged with second and third degree robbery. With two current death investigations and one hit and run fatality, a lot has been happening on Guam within the last month. We spoke with island residents today to hear their worries on crime. Two death investigations underway by detectives in the past month alone. One in Jigo, another in Chalampago. A hit and run fatality over the weekend. Robberies and burglaries. Is GPD winning the war on crime? Do you feel generally safe with the crime rates? Uh, no. Some island residents feeling unsafe have taken extra safety precautions. For my home, I did add security cameras and I do step outside just to take a look around, make sure the neighbors are also okay. I got dogs, but you know, even then the dogs, sometimes the dogs scared of them. So where I live, um, um, I am actually part of the Dededo and the Barragata Neighborhood Watch, yeah. GPD encourages the community to get involved with their respective Neighborhood Watch group chats, which can help deter crime. They're also urging residents to be proactive in reporting suspicious activities to GPD. If you'd like to join your village group chat, contact your local mayor's office. After two weeks of remote learning, half of the students at the Academy of Our Lady of Guam resumed face-to-face -face learning. Here's more with KUAM's Isaiah Uggen. It was back to in-person instruction for half of the Academy of Our Lady of Guam student population. Principal Iris Gaza breaks down the lesson plan. So we started having students on campus today and we decided for the next two weeks we would do our 50-50 hybrid um, learning modes. So right now we have freshmen and sophomores on campus and our juniors and seniors are online and then next week they will switch. The home of the Cougars actually started the school year with a hybrid learning model and plans to bring all students back to campus in January, which they did. But then the Omicron surge sent students into remote learning. In December, before we went on break, we were already gearing toward bringing everyone back in January for full inclusion, right? Um, so when January hit, we decided we were going to bring everyone back. So for a good two, three weeks, everyone was on campus. Um, right after the break. About 98% of employees and of 329 students are fully vaccinated, although not having a mandate requirement in place. In efforts to resume full in-person instruction, Gaza hopes resuming on-campus testing soon through the White House School Testing Initiative. It has been very helpful and instrumental in um, helping keeping our students safe. When we came back full face-to-face, we did our testing obviously increased because now everyone was on campus um, and it really um, affected our supply because by the end of the third week, we were we lit had literally no supplies. But we're supposed to be getting um, supplies from a Biden initiative that allows or that provides testing to schools on the island. And so we're waiting for those to come in, um, which is also one of the reasons why we didn't go back 100% to face to face this week. Reporting for Guam's News Network, Wahoo see Isaiah Ugin. A public hearing on the controversial Vista Del Mar is ongoing at this hour. The multi-million dollar development slated for construction at the Harmon Cliff Line has raised concerns from several senators about the environmental impact the project will have. The hearing at the Timunin Community Center will cover public comments for the proposed hotel, water park, single and multi-family home projects, as well as the developer's request at getting a variance approved so that it can build an additional 13 stories higher than the current 13 floor limit for the development. The sanitary permits of two restaurants located in Timunin were suspended following an inspection by public health. Inspectors were responding to a complaint on January 24th when they noticed multiple violations at Imperial Garden and Mungo Mongo. 
Both restaurants were cited for unclean conditions and both permits were suspended due to cockroach infestation. Sports is coming up next, but later in Giving Every Tuesday, we feature volunteer group Love Guam. Stay with us. We're back in a moment. Mobile Smiles just got bigger and better. Get more points for every gallon of fuel you purchase. Or get more miles with United Mileage Plus. Register your Smiles card online to start redeeming rewards today. At guam.mobilesmiles.com If COVID-19 has affected your ability to stay on top of your mortgage or utilities, you may be eligible for the Department of Administration's Guam Homeowner Assistance Fund. This new program can provide up to $15,000 to eligible homeowners to meet their mortgage obligations. While you keep your household safe, we want to help keep it stable and provide support for those who qualify. Pre-applications will be available starting January 31st. For more information, visit doa.guam.gov or call 671-638-3814. KUAM Sports is brought to you by Docomo Pacific. Better together. Geckos and Dolphins taken to the FD Phoenix Center in the East of AAAG Basketball League. Southern up 17 to 10 in the second quarter. GW playing the game with a few swing players filling in. Drew Sykes with the jumper at the free throw line, assisted by Alexa Roberto. Southern's Chloe Lopaton with her only basket of the game here. Geckos took the lead in the third quarter with under four minutes left. Free throws were clutch in the winding minutes. Esmeralda Samuel with the long two. Dolphins, Rayanne Sunnell led her team with 15 points. Driving baseline shot off the backboard is good. Serena Opindo caught fire late in the game. Opindo with the last few scores for GW to close out the third quarter. Geckos with the slim lead heading into the final quarter. G-Dub in the bonus to start the fourth. A pair of free throws put them ahead 35 to 29. The Dolphins also had some free trips to the charity stripe as the Geckos got into foul trouble. Alexa Roberto's back-to-back -back scores gave GW a 10-point lead. Jessica Naruhu put up six points for the Geckos. Naruhu with the pass to Carzina Alfonso to Roberto for the score. Geckos pick up the win 53 to 34. Alfonso led all scores in the win with 16 points. Keep it with basketball news. The University of Guam Recreation Department launched its first ever co-ed club basketball team at the Love and Basketball Tournament, sponsored by the Micro Friends Basketball Organization. The Trident's club team had a successful start with two wins at the Vicente S. A. Benaventi Middle School Gym. UOG is the number one seed with the two wins and automatically goes to the championship game scheduled for Sunday. The Tridents will play the winner of the Imperials and Advocate game. All UOG games are recorded and posted on the Triton Athletics YouTube channel. KUAM Sports is brought to you by Docomo Pacific. Better together. Need a new phone? Trade in now and get up to $500 off our best 5G devices. Trade in your older phone in any condition 
and step up to better savings and speeds only our 5G network can provide. Check out our website and catch up on the best mobile experience. Trade in now. Docomo Pacific, better together. This is a bag. But for Steve, this bag gives him food cred. Because now everyone knows that when they have that craving, or they're just looking for the perfect deal, well, they just need to follow Steve. Follow him all the way to the new McTerry Deluxe at McDonald's. It's an all-beef patty smothered with teriyaki sauce topped with lettuce and tomato on a sesame seed bun. For a limited time, price and participation may vary. Giving Every Tuesday highlights individuals, businesses, and organizations who are giving back and spreading kindness with simple gestures. Tonight, we take a look at the volunteer group Love Guam and how they're keeping the island beautiful, one seedling at a time. Community group Love Guam is no stranger to getting their hands dirty, having spearheaded many cleanup events throughout the island for the past few years. Michelle Lee is a social media manager for the group and explains why her mother created the group. She used to love going hiking, taking some tourists around, showing them the beautiful parts of the island. And she just got sad over all the trash and littering that she found every time she went hiking. So she decided to take it upon herself to create a corporation, a nonprofit organization that is really dependent on volunteers to come out like twice, two Saturdays every month to just come out, make a difference, pick up some trash, plant some trees, and have a good time. Since September of last year, Lee says Love Guam has added tree planting events to their list of community projects. Forestry Division Chief Christine Camacho Farron is grateful for Love Guam's assistance. Recently, a colleague from Bureau of Stats and Plants escorted the group for a day of tree planting. They've been awesome. They've been attending our, our events and even spearheading, requesting their own, <laughs> their own planting events to help forestry. And so Patrick took a team out to, out to Tarzan Falls or the, the hike trail, which, which is all actually Codal Conservation Reserve. And they planted over 300, about 300 trees, three or 400 trees. Um, and it was just really great for 20 volunteers. If you wish to take part in their upcoming events, you can find Love Guam on Facebook. Lee says they're appreciative of the volunteers who come out and continue to do so. Thankfully, a lot of people have been showing up. It's a lot military based. A lot of the military personnel really enjoy coming out and helping plan. Um, going on, this, it's a little bit of a hike to go to the locations to plan, but a lot of the military personnel show up to help make a difference on keeping our island beautiful. It's getting hot in here as KFC partners with Denancy Brand for hotness done right. Denancy Brand owners Lenny and Pika Farron telling KUAM KFC has always been considered local on Guam, so the Pika partnership was a no-brainer. We all know it just means correct in the Chamorro language. It means also right, you know, so that's why they, they went with the hotness done right. You know, so Denancy is the brand. Um, it's, it's basically just letting people know that we're a spicy condiment manufacturer. 100% uh, local, uh, our Dunny's coming from the south. As of right now, it's coming from Talafofo. Um, but, you know, we're looking to branch out as we grow. And it's, you know, it's a true local product. The Farrens took over the Colonel's Kitchen to create the KFC Denancy Chicken Sandwich and Twister, available at all KFC locations on Guam. And before we close out the news tonight, our latest round of birthday shoutouts from the Cold Stone Creamery Birthday Club. It's February 8th, guys, so happy birthday to Juan Gregorio Quintanita Hale. Happy birthday to you from all of your family and friends. Nova Jerome, happy birthday to you. Nova turns four today. That's a great, great age. We wish you the very best. And belated birthday wishes going out to Aiden Manglotnia, who was born on February the 6th. Happy birthday number nine, Aiden John. Your family, friends, and everybody that knows you are wishing you a fantastic birthday. Remember, you can be a part of the Coldstone Creamery Birthday Club by registering online at KUAM.